Hi, this is Mark Willis and I'm going to be showing you how to create a 3D model that can be printed to hard copy using shapeways.com or a similar rapid prototyping service. Uh, to do this you'll need a 3D model and a piece of software like 3D Studio Max or Blender uh, is another uh, open source option. Uh, I'll be using 3D Studio Max 2009 the steps here are pretty much the same for every version of Max. Okay, to get started, I'll go to File, Import, and we're going to go to a OBJ file, which is alias wavefront format, of a 3D model that I created using Structure from Motion. The uh, 3D model has a little over 100,000 polygons and all of the default settings that you see here unmodified are uh, what you want to have for your import so we click import now just to line things up a little better I go to zoom extends all and you'll see if I choose orbit and go to the perspective window that we have a 3D model uh, this 3D model is of a surface of rock that has a prehistoric pictograph on it. Uh, the pictograph uh, is from the Pecos region of uh, mm -hmm. West Texas. And to see the texture, we go to the Material Editor, click it, make sure this first box is selected, go down to Maps, cross from Diffuse Color, select None, double-click Bitmaps, and here is a bitmap that was already created for this 3D model that is uh, 2048 by 2048 pixels in size. This is the largest size that Shapeways.com can currently handle. So I made sure that I, I made this file uh, as large as it could be. Click open and then if you select the show standard map and viewport the texture will appear uh, in this screen. So I'm going to close the material editor. Now we can see the pictograph, this anthropomorphic figure, and he's on a very, um, it's a three-dimensional surface, but it's, it's t very two-dimensional at the same time in that it's so thin, it's almost like a piece of paper. To print this so that it has any volume, we'll have to give the 3D model volume. And to do that, we go to modify and we're going to choose elements here. I'm going to draw a box around the entire 3D model. And then go down to extrude. Now I've already found that an extrusion of 0 0.004 is good for this model. Uh, I had to play around with different values until I found one that was the right thickness. Click Extrude. And you'll see now that this model has a side to it. Uh, it doesn't have a bottom, it has a top, but it has sides and a bottom, uh, sides and a top. Now to close this model and give it true volume, we have to right click and choose Convert to Editable Mesh. Next, we go to the Modifier list and we choose Cap Holes. Now, I'm going to rotate the model and you'll see that we now have a solid back. Now, it has the same texture. The texture uh, attributes transferred on the 3D model to the back side, um, but a vast virus database has been updated. Sorry about that. Um, you'll see that we have a model with volume, and I, I chose this particular volume because I wanted the model to be thick enough that it would have some rigidness uh, when printed, but thin enough that it wouldn't cost a lot. When you when you print anything on Shapeways, it is based on the volume of the 3D model, uh, how much material is needed to print that model. Now before we can export this model out for use in, uh, for upload to Shapeways, we need to scale it. 
So the way I do this is probably different than most people, but I create a box, very simple box, and I have found that if the box is four meters in length by four meters in width, so click that and we'll zoom out. I found that this size it equates about out to 15 centimeters in a printed 3D model. So I'm going to choose my, my 3D model. Click OK. I'm going to go to Uniform Scale. I'm going to click in this triangle and I'm going to pull the 3D model out until it is approximately four meters or four metric units in max anyway. Then I delete the original box. It was just there for reference. And now we're going to export this model so that it can be uploaded to 3D Studio Max, I mean to uh, Shapeways. So we'll go to File, Export, and we're going to give this the name 41CX2, which is its trinomial, and we'll call it New Tutorial. Now, this is VRML 97 format. Uh, that is the equivalent to VRML 2 or VRML 2.0. Uh, it's what we need. So we're going to click Save, and a new exporter options box opens. We want to turn off primitives. We want to leave indentation on. We want to change digits precision to six. And it's very important that we uncheck the bitmap URL prefix. We do not want to use that. These are the settings that you want to use. Click OK. And it'll very quickly export out that file. And sorry, here is our world file. VRML format, and here is the texture map that I had created previously for the OBJ file. Now you want to make sure these are both zipped into one compressed folder for uploading. So we'll go to Send to Compressed Zip Folder, and it created a 41CX2 new tutorial.zip. And if we open that, just to show you what's in it. You'll see again that it has the JPEG, which is uh, the 2048 by 2048 pixels uh, in size, and again the VRML uh, export. So close that. Now, this is what we're going to want to upload to Shapeways. So, assuming you have a Shapeways account, you want to go to Create, Upload. And we want to choose that zip file that we just created. That's here. I'm going to choose the manual fix. And this is important. You want to make sure the units of measure that Shapeways is going to look at is set to millimeters. And then finally, you want to click Upload. Now, this will upload a 3D model to Shapeways. And they're going to send you an email telling you at first that the model arrived. And then, normally within 10 minutes to maybe a couple of hours, depending on how busy they are, you'll get a reply that tells you either that there are problems with the model or that the model is viable. <clears throat> Assuming your model is viable, uh, you can then look at it in uh, your My Models menu. And... Uh, here is an earlier version of this model that I uploaded. Click on that. And um, it'll open up and it'll show us the size. It shows that in centimeters it's about 12.4 uh, centimeters long and about 12.7 wide and about 4.2 deep. That 4.2 is from the highest point of the model to the lowest point, so we're really looking at a model that's real thickness is about a um, centimeter. And we're looking here at the bottom side of the 3D model. This is that capped side, so this is not what 
the important part of the important side of the model will look like so this is fine uh, you want to select a material and because we're printing in 3d you'll want to use full color sandstone <coughs> currently this is going to be $133 print um, if this is more than I want to spend or it turns out the scale isn't quite as large as I want I would go back into max and either scale it down or scale it up or maybe adjust the extrusion value so that it's not quite as thick um, to drop down the, the size of, and, and price of the model. Uh, then all you have to do is wait. Uh, normally it's about eight business days and the model arrives. Six calendar days after ordering the model it arrived from Shapeways. Uh, overall I'm impressed with the quality of the image and it is a true representation of the actual rock art uh, panel that I visited. Uh, if you'd like to know more about this, uh, you can visit my blog at palantir.blogspot.com. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you.